Hi everyone, my name is Ava and I'm an American living in the Netherlands. And today I wanted to tell you about my recent trip to the US, which actually made me feel pretty lucky to be living in the Netherlands, other than the fact that there's great cheese here. But that is not gonna be the main focus of this video. Disappointing, I know. What I actually wanted to talk about were the larger things that stood out to me on this trip. And some of you might've noticed that I was in the US in January as well, but I was very busy planning my marriage and wedding. So I wasn't quite paying attention to the surroundings as much as I normally would. So this time I did, and it definitely brought up some things that I wanted to share with you today. But before we get into those things, I just wanna say that I don't want it to seem that I think that there is nothing good about the US, which is not true. There is a reason why I chose to move to the Netherlands, but that aside, there are things about the US and Americans that I really like and miss. So to balance it out at the very end, I'm gonna talk about one positive thing that stood out to me and shocked me. Now the first thing that I wanted to share with you is how polarized I thought the US is, and I'm talking politically. So in the Netherlands, you have multiple political parties. In the US, they are two big ones. You're either a Democrat or Republican. And note that I said you are one of those things. I guess you could also technically be a libertarian, but then nobody cares. So being a Democrat or being a Republican is really part of your identity in the US. And that has never stood out to me more. And I have a feeling that it's getting worse with time. I think that's kind of what people say who do research on political behaviors of people, that people are getting more and more polarized, maybe with the spread of social media and you know fake news or the fact that you aren't exposed to other viewpoints as much because of the algorithm. So let me tell you where this stood out to me in the US. So I am from New York City, from Queens, but on this trip, we also went to upstate New York for a wedding. And my wife, who was also with me on this trip, has never been to upstate New York, and she did not know what to expect. Now, if you don't have a clear vision of upstate New York, like the state of New York, which also exists in addition to the city, you might not know that upstate New York has very few people, and it has a totally different culture than that of New York City. My wife did not know what to expect. She kind of thought it was going to be a mini New York, but you know, in the form of small towns that are closely clustered together. It is not like that. There are very few people. It's just mountains and land and sparse villages. It's really quite something. Now, uh, it's typical in the US for more rural areas, not necessarily, but that's sort of the correlation. It is also very Republican. Now, if you have been following me for a while, it should come as no surprise to you that I am a Democrat. Again, I am a Democrat and also how interesting that even though I don't often talk about my political viewpoints here, that you probably could have guessed that from a lot of my behaviors. And that is surprising. That should tell you how distinct those two groups are, that you can probably make a pretty educated guess about which way someone's leaning. Are they leaning left or are they leaning right? And the fact that there were a whole slew of behaviors associated with this surprised me. And I don't think I ever thought about it to that degree. To the point where my wife went for a run in upstate New York and then she comes back and she says, while well, I was still in bed, of course, because I'm not getting up early to go for a jog. So anyway, she comes back and she goes, Ava, I just realized that going for a run like this in the morning is a Democrat thing. And I just stare at her and I go, oh my God, that's right. If I were to see someone go for a run in this area, I would assume they voted left. How wild is that, that you can make that prediction? Anyway, so that was interesting. There were also lots of like, Trump posters and signs everywhere. And I think the fact that people like to advertise that to that degree is also very American. You will see that in the Netherlands, but much less, far less. But in the US, everyone is very interested in letting you know what way they vote and what their identity is, because essentially that's what it comes down to. Moving on to the next thing, that was not the only thing we noticed in upstate New York. We also noticed how difficult it was to have access to healthy food. Now, the whole issue of food is a bit complicated because every time a European person talks to me and says, oh, Ava, the US has terrible food, I have to stop them because I totally disagree. You can find great food in the US, especially in cities, and especially if you have money. So there are other issues associated with this. Whereas US cities are total melting pots, we have food from all over the place. And you know, unlike the Netherlands in America, we do know what spices are. But okay, in upstate New York, fast food was really easy to come by. And if you went to a restaurant or a casual joint, you would still get food that was pretty unhealthy, even if you got a salad. So that was hard. And also the supermarkets there, at least the ones that we went to, extremely difficult for us to find a good selection of fruit and vegetables. 
This was mind blowing to us. We went to a grocery store and we really scavenged to see what they had. In the end, both me and my wife got an apple and she ate her apple right away. I ate mine a little bit later. And as I was eating it, I had to look at her and I said, well, I can't finish this because this apple tastes weird. And I am not one to not finish my food. You know, I love food. I eat it all. But that apple, I was a little bit like, even though I was craving a fruit, this is not, this tasted weird. And I thought it tasted like cleaning supplies. That is a very distinct flavor, right? Very specific. I didn't say anything. And then my wife looks at me and goes, oh, does it taste like cleaning supplies? The fact that both of our apples tasted funky is telling. And also the, that we both chose to describe it in that very particular way. So this is not positive. We felt really bad for the people living there because that is just where they go grocery shopping. That is what they have access to. We were just visiting. Okay, now the next thing I wanted to share with you is a bit more lighthearted and very neutral, I would say. And that is that when I was in the US, I was kind of shocked by how big everything was. And I'm not just talking about the food portion and the sizes of drinks. No, I'm just talking about everything. I feel like you get off at JFK or any other US airport. I don't know why I just assumed everyone gets off at JFK. That is really not true, but you get off the airport and then immediately I feel like the first thing you notice is how big everything is. And when you're in a cab and you're driving down on the streets, you notice how broad and big the streets are. You, you see the houses and the houses look big. I mean, we went to visit a friend of mine uh, at Princeton best friend. I have to say that otherwise she will be very upset. She's my best friend. So we went there and you know, she was like, Oh, Ava, you know, we just moved into this apartment. It's really small. It's just a one bedroom. And I was like, that's totally fine. I lived in Amsterdam. I know what small is. I'm from New York. No problem. But we walk in and the place is huge. Like her idea of what small is, is so different from my idea of small. If I think small, I think of a 20 square meter apartment in Amsterdam or New York, you know, where you can like barely fit a bed and it's like a studio. No, it was just, it just had like three separate rooms. The kitchen was spacious. It was huge. And then this is what like gets me about the U S it's amazing. They're like, storage areas in the house for everything, for your washer dryer, for like your food. There's almost always a pantry. So even in this one bedroom place, there was like lots of storage space and they went to Costco to buy stuff for us. It was very sweet. And they came back with these like huge containers of pretzels and like snacks. And they even bought macarons and it here in the Netherlands, you can get like a little strip of them. They had this huge pack, but literally everything they bought and Costco is one of these super sized stores. So like it was huge and it all just fit in these other huge spaces. So I was there and like, wow, this is huge. And not to mention you walk outside and like, again, the huge streets and the houses, but also like the cars. That's one of the first things that you also notice. So that's pretty surprising. I think the US is just so much bigger than the Netherlands and it shows. Okay, now the next thing I wanna talk about really shows how spoiled I am living in the Netherlands because I think the Netherlands when compared to the US just feels more pleasant in a very intangible way for me. And I think that has to do with the Dutch culture of gezelligheid, but I also think it's just more European, so to speak. Like in the US, here's the thing, I found everything to be ongezellig. Like, Definitely very practical and convenient and it has its own American charm, but I just feel like I am used to a very different aesthetic now that is cute, clean, cozy. Like everything just feels like a nice cozy living room. Like you walk into Utrecht in the center and you know everything is outside and their blankets and their lights and it's clean and beautiful. I mean, yes, it, I'm spoiled. What can I say? But then I go back to the US and I feel like not only is there like dirt and trash everywhere. Like, honestly, I'm from New York City and every time people would tell me, Ava, New York is really dirty, I would tell them, oh my God, you're just like exaggerating. New York is just fine. Like I would ride, ride the subway in shorts, had no problem with my skin touching everywhere. It just didn't gross me out. But now when I went back to the city this time, uh, it grossed me out big time. Big time, so gross. Oh my God, rats everywhere. And like the subway itself just felt so cold and icky. Like I, again, I had never felt that way before, but I think just living in the Netherlands for so long makes it so that now everything looks different. 
And I also had trouble finding restaurants that met my high standards of coziness. Oh my God, like I can't, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying that that stood out to me in the US. Another time this really stood out to me was when I was taking the train in the US. I take the train pretty frequently here in the Netherlands because it's just so accessible. Like you could take the train everywhere, you know, if it decides to show up. So taking the train in the Netherlands, like I'm used to looking out of my window, everything looks very nice, pretty clean. Like even when you pass by these areas where there are a lot of like industries and businesses, it's still clean. Like it may not be the best view, but it's clean and like everything is well kept. In the US, that was not what I experienced. Now the US is bigger, of course, there's a lot more maintenance to be done but I looked out of the window and the Hudson line, for instance, like the, the train that goes near the Hudson river, it's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And I told my wife, like, look, your ancestors, they, that's what they saw and they decided to settle here. How cool is that? But you know, beautiful train ride. But every time we came near cities or civilizations, I say cities, I'm thinking Albany, that's one city, but like even villages, towns, there was just a lot of trash to be seen. And that stood out to me. My cat has decided to join me in the meantime, as I talk to you about the next thing on this list, I'm not pushing him too hard. He just needs to know that he needs to get out of the way for the camera. But now this next thing is a really sensitive subject in the US and I have talked about it here and that is health insurance. Now, when I talked about it before, I mentioned how if in the US you are someone who doesn't have health insurance, like healthcare can get pretty expensive pretty fast because you don't have health insurance and there's also no real way to regulate what like an operation can cost for instance. So that's pretty awful. Like you call an ambulance and suddenly you're in debt for tens of thousands of dollars. Like that should not be the case. In addition to that, I notice what happens even when you have good health insurance this time. Like a friend of mine, he got sick. He wasn't extremely sick. He just had a bit of a flu. And so he wanted to, you know, get like an inhaler for it. It was all very simple, like just some simple medication to help him overcome his flu symptoms. And he has really good health insurance through his work. So he just called the nurse and said, hey, I would like this medicine, like where can I get it? And they said, go to this pharmacy and you can pick it up. Like they prescribed it for him. And the thing is like the pharmacy would not cover that medicine. It's like mind blowing. Like they told him, no, you know, your healthcare provider, like the, the, they have to take care of it. And they told him instead when he was on the phone with them, no, that the pharmacy will have to comp it. So it's sort of like each person kept going to the other and he was on the phone for several hours. And the thing is, and he also kept reminding everybody like, and I have good health insurance. Like imagine when you don't have that. And he had just spent two years living in the UK. So he definitely was aware that the system could be better. Now this makes me feel very grateful to live in the Netherlands because even with the shortage of general practitioners here, you know, the wait times can get a bit long. I feel like by and large, the system works. And even if sometimes I want to tell the doctor, Hey, prescribe something other than paracetamol and run some more tests if that's necessary. Like, you know, I have things to complain about, but by and large, I feel like it works and that I am taken care of here. Like, I don't feel like I have to worry about going into debt because of healthcare or that if I wanted to get some medicine that it wasn't comped. And that brings us to the final thing that I wanted to share with you. And that is how it struck me that Americans can be so friendly and outgoing even to strangers. So in New York, if you're sitting in the New York subway, it is not an uncommon sight that tourists will walk into the subway and look absolutely clueless. Like Queens, it doesn't matter. Just everywhere in New York, you will find clueless tourists in the subway and they don't know what to do. Now, I feel like in Amsterdam, when that happens and there are tourists like walking around with no idea where they're going, like even when that's obvious, you know, like Dutch people will mind their own business. They're like, oh, tourists, like, what are you doing in Amsterdam? Stay away. Whereas in New York, people like go up to them, like literally every single time someone in the subway car would go up to them and say, Hey, like, where do you need to go? Do you need help? And they would give them tips and like have a nice conversation. Like sometimes even ask them like how long they were in town for. And these are New Yorkers, right? Like usually they don't talk to people, but I think people feel like, Oh, you're visiting our city. That's nice. Let me help you out. And I feel like people are always saying like Americans are fake, but I feel like Americans are not fake. I will say that sometimes the conversation can be very superficial, but I think that's just a crutch we use to help us through the conversations and to, you know, navigate social situations. And then the other thing I hear when I say that, for instance, customer service in the US is excellent because people are really friendly. People say, oh, they do that for a tip. 
but I honestly witnessed that that's really not the case. Like if I was questioning it before, I don't question that anymore. Like we were uh, taking the train from upstate New York to New York City and there was someone that we had met on the trip who was also taking this train, but he was going in a different direction. He had to transfer, but the train was delayed, that first train. So he was gonna miss his transfer, but the conductor just called the other train and told them the situation. So then they made the other train wait for this person so that he could make his connection. Like how nice is that? And this person happens to be from New Zealand and was living in England right now. So he was very surprised and he immediately was like, wow, customer service in America is fantastic. And this person wasn't doing it for the tip. You know, they just wanted to be helpful and made sure that he could make his train and get to where he needed to go. So that was all I wanted to share with you today about my trip to the US. As usual, if you have anything to say, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, thank you for watching.